Order for proposal number 225, the chair recognizes the author for a two-minute intro statement. Thank you, Chair. Matt Sick, California. In the last 50 years, a lot of work has gone into solving the Israel-Palestine conflict. And out of all that, only one possible solution has ever really appealed to both sides, the two-state solution. That's a compromise that splits the land in two and gives them to each side. So if they agree, why have they been at war for 50 years? In this seemingly simple equation, negotiations to implement the two-state solution have been missing something, compromise. The problem here remains the U.S.'s close relationship with Israel. As long as the United States is an ally only to one side, an agreement on the two-state solution will never be reached, despite its popularity with all sides. Today, negotiations to implement the two-state solution are not only pointless, but flat-out dishonest. They all start the same way. The U.S. bends over backwards to get the two sides to come together, promising that this time, this time, things will be different. But then, surprise, surprise, the end is the same as it's been for 50 years. The Americans, who had promised this new era of peace, join in on Israel's side. Together, they dictate terms completely unacceptable to the Palestinians. Of course, they're rejected. Soon, negotiations collapse and we're right back where we started. The results of all this? A hundred billion dollars lost to the United States. Tens of thousands of dead civilians in Israel and Palestine. And exactly zero results. And so my proposal comes into play. We must abandon the status quo that more resembles schoolyard bullying than international relations. My proposal requires that negotiations include Palestine's ally, Jordan. This type of support has never been available to Palestine. Israel has enjoyed it for decades. U.S. foreign policy must shift away from blind allegiance to Israel and instead embrace a system that can provide peace. And only this shift will provide peace. Our loyalty to Israel has not solved the problem. It has perpetuated the system of violence that has become the status quo. That is not progress, it is not peace, and as long as it continues, we have failed. Thank you, author. The floor is now open for technical non-debatable questions. The chair recognizes Prada, Monticello, Holland, Dodia, Boyd, Jones, McKean. Thank you, Sir Chair Marissa Parada, Delegation of New York. Will the delegate please elaborate on what the United States is supported by Israel, the brutalities, and the occupies in Palestine? I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? I'm not understanding. Sure, yes. Will the delegate please elaborate on the brutalities and occupied by Thank you, Israel? delegate. Absolutely. I mean, the situation in Israel is, in, in the Middle East, is appalling. There are rocket strikes against, rocket strikes against towns that have Thank no... You, author. But not so the Michigan delegation. Uh, will the PLO be the governing body for Palestine? Um, the PLO technically doesn't exist anymore. It's called the, it's, the, it's become the Palestinian Authority, and specifically the political Thanks. party. <laughs> the next delegate. Uh, uh, Chairman Bush, Louisiana delegation. Uh, you listed all the negatives that comes along with U.S. Uh, joining up with Israel. Is there any positives? Yes, obviously. Um, we've been able in the past to field test some of our weapons against weapons that were manufactured for Arab states by the Russians and uh, things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, South Carolina. So, where exactly does Hamas stand in these negotiations? Hamas is currently the governing agency in the Gaza Strip, which is part of the of the Palestinian Thank territory. Thank you, Officer. Uh, Molly, Chair. Well, Mr. Kosovo, it does not, but that's intentional. Delegate, that's a debatable question. The chair, rec the chair will um, recognize two more questions. Angles. So, are there any Palestinian or Israeli uh, leaders that currently propose, I mean, support the proposal? Almost all of them. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. Chair, I'm Sweet and Jones, my Um Will the land be split evenly between the two states, or how will it the, the proposal is not intended to deal with the actual physical division of the land. Thank you, author. Again, the chair would like to remind the chamber that technical non-debatable questions are supposed to be just that, not partisan. With that, I'd like to start con pro debate. Is there a speaker who wishes to rise against the proposal? The chair rise recognizes Korski. Delegate, your time has started. Thank you, sir, chair. Senator Gorski, State of Maryland. of this is that, as we can see in 
the time after World War II, in India did gain its independence and divided itself into India and Pakistan based on religious uh, sex. However, sorry, however, this division of the nation did not end, the, end violence. This did still, oh, sorry, the violence between each religion, between Hindu and Muslim religion did indeed continue in India and Pakistan. How do you have my time to You've yielded 40 seconds. Thank you, Sir Chair, and thank you, fellow delegate, Shamal Ramakrishna from New Jersey Delegation. The problem with this proposal to me is the deeply and irrevocably entrenched relations between Israel and the rest of the Arab world. Um, this is kind of scarily similar to what's already been done in the past, and Israel has been at odds in the Arab, in the Arab world, starting from the Six Days War and the Yom Kippur War. And really, this proposal, what it's saying is that the U.S. government will bring the Israeli and Palestinian governments together to guide themselves through a process to ensure peaceful coexistence. And the author hasn't really elaborated as to what this process will really entail. And although the Jordan government is pretty much the only new part of this proposal, it hasn't been done Thank before. Thank you, Delegate. That the chair would like to recognize a pro speech. The chair recognizes Halligan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Delegate Halligan from Connecticut. I would like to reserve my right to give my extra time to the delegate from Missouri. So reserved. Um, thank you. Uh, I would just like to say that it, this would be a huge step for Palestine, as Palestine was originally its own country prior to the UN giving uh, the land to Israel after World War II. Also, along that line, it would help uh, Palestine become potentially recognized by the UN as a member state, which they are not now, which they should be, because I feel they should be their own governing body. But according to the Montevideo Accords uh, uh, Convention of 1932, I believe it is, they need a permanent population, uh, they need to be self-governing, they need to have set borders, and they need to be able to entertain trade. And I think if we give them the opportunity to start civilized talks and have set things to talk about, I think it will help them become more of a state and help them join the UN, which would hopefully potentially solve the problems that would have would and have been going on between them and Israel in the past years. And I yield the rest of my time to the delegate from Missouri. You yield in 20 seconds. Um, really quickly, I would just like to um, comment. Delegate, you're out of order. Didn't state your name in delegation. With that said, the chair would like to recognize uh, Freeman. Uh, Sydney Freeman, Mob UN delegation. Thank you, sir. Chair, I'd like to reserve my right to make a motion. I would like to yield my time to the delegate from Texas. That's your right. I would like to say that I do not, I am a huge fan of diplomatic relations and I like peace talks, but this is all that really is going to happen. This is just more money into peace talks. This is not actually going to promote anything else besides intimidation and manipulation. I don't think that it's necessary for the United States to feel that they are big and bad enough to go into somewhere else because they feel that they have the responsibility. I'm sick of hearing this money being wasted away on these peace talks. If you want to keep doing peace talks, then fine. But you don't need to go in and create a new state because I think it's unnecessary. I give the rest of my time to meet the delegate. I'll give you only 30 seconds. <laughs> Chamber, please come to order. Robbie Moore, Republic of Texas. Thank you, fellow delegate. I'd just like to point out a few things here. This is way more than just politics. The, what is going on between Pakistan and Israel is deeper than just things you can solve through politics. It is in religion. It is through hatred, and it is through passion of hating each other that we cannot solve through sitting them both down in a room and saying, here, political Thank leaders... Thank you, delegates. The chair would like to recognize the final pro speaker. The chair recognizes Cheshikova. Please say your name, delegation. And again, guys, this is third committee. I have called, started calling out of order, and this will be the last time. Um, may I yield? 
the volunteer state. I um, reserve the right to yield time to the delegate from Louisiana. So reserved. Um, I'd like to submit to my fellow delegates, first of all, that I agree with the basic premise behind this uh, proposal, which is um, bringing peace to the Israeli-Palestinian region. However, I'd like to point out that this is perhaps the greatest diplomatic challenge that the United States has in the current century. Um, because if we don't do this properly, we risk alienating our greatest ally in that region, in Israel. Um, I can't see very many assurances, and I'd like, I'd like to have the author address this in the closing remarks. Um, I can't see very many assurances that both countries would be willing to come down and sit at the table on this, um, and that we can make that happen without alienating Israel, which I think is important. Although I do not deny the um, the uh, the problems that Israel has had and the mistakes that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's government has made over the past few years, I would also affirm that Israel is one of our greatest allies as a democracy and as a strong opponent of other hostile nations such as Iran in the region. So we need to make sure that we do this in a way that does not alienate them, but also provides peace for the region. Um, and I want to talk. You yielded 30 seconds. Uh, Chairman Bush from the Louisiana delegation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to clarify that the United States is not the peacekeeper. That is the United Nations job. Uh, we have tried democracy in the Middle East before, and clearly it has not worked, and it is still not working. This should be up to Palestine and Israel and their job only. The United States should back out of their hole and let them deal with this problem. Thank you, and I yield the minute over time to the chair. Thank you, Del. This time for Concord debate has now elapsed, and the chair will recognize the proposal author for a two-minute and three-second summation. Uh, thank you, Chair. i California delegation. I just want to thank everyone for, for this debate. I enjoyed it a lot, and I want to bring up some of the points that were brought up against me. First, this, there's a reason that this proposal is not a physical division of the land. Uh, what this proposal is, is a shift in U.S. foreign policy. The inclusion of Jordan and putting the, the, the negotiations first is the quickest way to peace. The alliance with Israel is what, our, our devotion to the alliance with Israel is what causes the problem. The Palestinians know that our negotiation tactic is not negotiation, but bullying. We are going to sit down alongside Israel and we are going to bully them. I'm changing that. Um, another speaker said that this is the greatest diplomatic challenge of our era. That's absolutely true, and how to solve this is something that I personally have struggled with for a long time. I'm Jewish. Israel was born from one of the greatest horrors that ever faced my people, and there's nothing I care about more than its continued preservation. And it's through this process, through the peace process, through the ending of the war with the Palestinians that that happens. Most of the, the really belligerent governments in the Middle East say that their reason for hatred of Israel is their oppression of the Palestinians. If we remove oppression of the Palestinians from the equation, what do they have left to go on? Uh, I'd like to point out that actually, there's, it's mentioned in the proposal, there's a chance this actually could uh, shift that, that kind of anger in the Middle East towards the Iranians. They're already Shiites in a Sunni world and the Persians in an Arab world. They're not loved in the Middle East. So we could actually find more allies in our conflict with the Iranians, our, our diplomatic conflict with the Iranians, if we were to go through, give the Palestinians their due, and 
solve the greatest diplomatic crisis of the 20th and 21st centuries. And I yield my time to the chair. Thank you, author. With that, we will now move to proposal ranking.